Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back to Hexel's Infinite. So I ha did 3-6 again, and it did seem, again, how many times have I said it now? It seems like there w was a logical way. Maybe I was just not awake enough to figure out how to solve it without guessing. What you're probably learning about me, and which is probably true for most people, is that we, our brains are only designed so well as far as uh, how much processing it can do before it starts throwing in the random number generator of guessing, just saying, try this factor, try this factor, try this factor. Uh, computers, on the other hand, are very, very bad to do that. I mean, you really don't even would, would never even program a software to say, well, this is taking too much processing power doing it a logical way. Let's just throw in random numbers until we find a solution that works. And the reason for that, of course, is that in mathematics, you want to, if you want your formulas to work with every possible number ever, not just uh, just one number because sure almost anybody can make a formula that works for one sets of numbers anyways uh we're doing the tutorial here numbers inside blue cells indicate the number of other cells in a two hex radius left click to open the guide right click to mark as complete so this gets introduced in uh four one which I would have thought it would have been introduced a little bit earlier. So when you click here, it's telling you in a two in any direction uh, hex that there is this number of mines. So for instance, here, there are, I believe, 18 here. If we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So all 18 of those are mines. And that would be the only bit of information you would have here to solve this. Uh, and I figured out what the button in the on the main menu is that highlights it. It puts a black line when you turn on this guide, which is actually very helpful because uh, because in Hexels Plus, it was really difficult to see the guide uh, because it didn't have a black line. And I made several mistakes, at least a couple, uh, because of just being unable to see it. It also slightly, like, fades out, puts a white shadow over uh, everything. But still, that's very difficult to see. Uh, notice here, it's one column and then two columns. Not actually one, then the next one. It's, it wouldn't be this, then this, or anything like that. So it goes two columns out, and it goes two columns up. I mean, those would be rows, two rows up, to make a X grid. And it goes to diagonal just by that factor. So that one's solved. We can right click to get rid of it. This one tells us that in these 18, well, 17 sections, there's only one. And then this one tells us that it's touching one, so that means immediately we know this, 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 this and this and this and this are all out. So an amazing amount of information can be derived and an amazing amount can be eliminated. We have two consecutive here, two consecutive here. Either one of these would have told, it, it told us it had to be here and that eliminates that and that and satisfies this. And then here, as an example, is one, there's one here, and then there's one in these, this group, 
and theoretically that doesn't mean anything because there could be one here and there could be one here. It's not until you have the third piece of information that there's only one remaining can you deduce that only the overlap here helps. And this outline is so much better about showing the overlaps of slightly adjacent uh, pieces like this. So only this middle one overlaps. We know there's only one, so we can tell you right there that's the that's it. And because this one has been solved, we can get rid of all of these. And all question marks here. Because this one's solved, we can get rid of all of these. But either way, still these two are possibilities. So if we had three remaining, this one and this one would be marked. But since we don't have three remaining, we have none remaining, we can get rid of this and we can get rid of that. Now let's quickly go back to the menu and show the difference of what it looks like before. So on here if we click this to the other way let's go show you what it looked like in Hexels Plus it did this and it didn't even do this as well so that not having that thick black line definitely makes it a lot more difficult and then you can just barely tell that there's an overlap at all here because of the this being slightly wider than these, which are wider than this one. Uh, the shading element there is not very good at all. So definite improvement there that, uh, to have that, and we will definitely keep that on. Still no volume control, and I'd love to see a fourth Hexels game in which he just increased the number of puzzles for infinite, made some more and uh, uh, made them more pictorial, added some more features. It almost needs to be like patched. If he went back and patched his original three games, I think that would probably be better than him making a fourth one. But I'd definitely be, it would be nice if there was a volume control in there. All right. So this three is three consecutive, which means that this one and this one are a part of it because it's either one, two, three, or one, two, three. This three tells us there's one here. This three tells us there's one here, or two here and one here. This five tells us that there's one here and then four here. Let's see. Yeah. This three tells us that there's probably one here and four here. And there's probably one here and four here. And that's a lot of information. And it's too much information and it doesn't help. But this tells us that there's only one here. And once we put that on and we say, well, there's one here somewhere, could be here, and then there could be another one here, hmm, interesting, and this five says there has to be one here, one there, and then four here. Is that what this says? There's one here that satisfies this. There's one here that gives us two. And this would give us four here. So that would, that's too much info. It's all just too much info. And we know 
this is going to come into the factor too. Interesting. If there's something to calculate here, I don't see it. I do not see it. That's so much info. That is so much info I can't... This 4 doesn't tell us anything yet. Let's try this 2. How about this? This 2 has a potentially 1 here at most and then 1 here has to be or it could be two here. And it has to actually has to be two here because we need six. So it has to be of these three two, which means this and this are in and this and this are in. Interesting. This three doesn't tell us anything. This four does tell us something because that means there's one more here minus this three and this three doesn't tell us anything oh man the, the math here the math here is so extreme Again, my mind is already coming up and saying, guess, 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 you want to guess. There's 30 minds remaining, it's ridiculous to guess. What well, could be is there could be one here. there could be one here and that would give us our three and eliminate those but it could be that there's one here and one here and then that would leave these two rows open to have two more there so this one doesn't have to be included at all not yet at least. This three is gonna touch two more. This one is gonna touch uh, one more. Does that imply or mean in any way that this is one of them? Not particularly. Not until we get rid of this. And if this was one, then that would mean all three of these were one. So if it turned out that this was a mine here, that wouldn't be included in this four region. And so then it would need two extra, not one extra. None of that math seems to logically include anything. Wait a minute. I think we may have to actually do math here to solve this. We have five here. We have five here and three here that with only one here. So if this five was going to satisfy, it would have to do one here and then these three and these four. 
just get rid of this for a second. Only one of this can be here, so all of these have to be... Really? No. They don't. Wow. First mistake. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five. If I counted correctly, I wouldn't have been able to solve that. And I don't think this really particularly helps me. This one, this four for instance here is, is, needs to touch one more. And we know that there's one more potentially here, but it's almost certainly this. Almost certainly has to be this. This overlap and this overlap says that these two are out. Then this four gets rid of that one. Now this five includes that one. But I really didn't find the clue that got us to that. There was some high level calculation there that I'm just not seeing. This three has been satisfied so we can get rid of that. This three is touching three now, so we can get rid of these. Wait, it's not touching three? No, it's not. One, two. It does include itself, so I almost made a mistake there, but I caught it there. That solves that one. That one solves that one. So now we can start making, making some headway. This two is only touching two. Uh, this two is already touching two, so that one's out. This two is only touching two now. This one's out. This two can get rid of this. Mm. This four needs two more. This five. there was one here, then there couldn't be one here. Let's see. This four here needs one more. If there was one here, we have no idea about those. This five needs two more. If there was one here, then we couldn't put one here. If there was one here, then we could put one here. If there's one here, we could put one here. Is there any scenario where we could do this? And we could do this and this and that. Nope, that wouldn't work. So I don't think there's any scenario where we can do this one. This and then this are the solution. I think. I hope. No! Well, in the trilogy, the, the puzzles, I think, have gotten harder. I, I think I'm proving the puzzles have gotten harder. As my second mistake, I'm not going to get all of those sweet hex cells. This one's satisfied now, so we can get rid of this. This one's satisfied, so we can get rid of this. This gets rid of this one. This gets rid of that one. This one includes that one. This gets rid of that one. This one includes these two. This four then gets rid of this, this three includes that. And this three tells me that there's one here, and this two tells me that there's one here. So when we get down to that point, we'll probably have a hex cell here and a hex cell here that will tell us how to fix this, but we'll wait. We'll wait a second. This three's been satisfied, we're done with that. 16 remaining, two mistakes, and you're still right over here. And the introductory bit of information, 
much. I, I don't even think I had these two. I just kind of started with these three pieces of information. Seems to indicate everything we need to know. And how are we going to figure this out? Do we know for certain that this is one? Or is it going to be this is one? I mean, doesn't it have to be this? Because if I go one, two here and one here, that's four. That satisfies that. And then if I did this, there'd be one here and one here, and that would be three. And then this one, one here would be satisfied. And Everything seems to point to this, but I think there are scenarios where I'm not looking correctly. I think... I, everything seems to point that this is in and it isn't. See? That's what I thought. Well, now we know these two have to be in. Let's just turn these off for a second. This two gets rid of these. Third mistake, two or three guesses, four guesses maybe, even. This two tells us that it has to be this one, then that eliminates that. But I don't see the logical process here that would have gotten us to that point. I just don't see anything there that solves that. It seems like a 50-50 guess, or actually probably a uh, 33, 33, 33, and a third guess, uh, one out of three. This four needs one more. This four is maybe satisfied, though. This one, one, two, three, four. Yep. One, two, three, four. That means everything here has to be eliminated. This two then gets rid of that. This two fixes this. This four is only touching three right now. This three is only touching two right now. So we know somewhere between these is one. So that one's out there, interestingly enough, which, since it's a two non-consecutive touching three, we know the answer is here. This two then gets rid of those. That satisfies this, that satisfies this. This two... This two is only touching two now. This gets rid of this. This includes that. And no surprise, that's another hex cell. So I see the ending clearly here. It's pretty easy to figure out and it should be pretty easy to calculate. But the beginning here, just to get started, seems like a nightmare. There's three remaining on this section. Two are here. And then there will almost certainly be one here. And then this one Let's see, two were here, between these three, and then if it was here, and here, that would leave five, six. I think that's how we have to calculate it. I think that eliminates these two, because I couldn't put one here, and that would get us down to six then put two here and get us down to four and then not have a solution, not have one there. Well, maybe I could, but I don't think that would be a good idea. There's one here being marked, there's one here being marked, 
and there's one here being marked. So if there wasn't one here at all, it would not really give us a full belief to start eliminating these, because that means there would be one. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, nope, there has to be a hex cell here. But how can we prove it? How can we logically prove there? Well, this three here tells us that one of these has to be it, right? Because it's only touching these. And so that would satisfy with these, so that gets rid of this. This two consecutive tells us it has to be this one. That then gets back to this and tells us this one's out. Plus this three would have told us that one's out. That gets us back to this. That tells us that's in, which this gets rid of this, which this includes this one. That's how we do it good. So, we know there's one here, one here, one here, and one here remaining which means all of these can be eliminated. Hmm. So now we just need to figure out which ones are which. These two are out because of the zero. This one is only touching one, so it's in. This one's only touching one, so it's in. That satisfies this. That satisfies this. This one gets rid of this one. This one's only touching one. So that satisfies this one. This one's only touching one. That means this is the one remaining. But I made three mistakes, so I am too short for my hex cells collection. We need 12 more hex cells to unlock the next section and a hundred and forty to unlock the final section. Let's just look at 4-3. It's small but it's gonna get complicated. There's a strange just random increase in complications on these puzzles and often the smaller ones that are presented here are way more difficult than the big ones. The big ones often have more opportunities to find the right path. So that'll probably take us another 30 minutes just like this took us 30 minutes. Technically we're 36 percent complete so that's good news. Uh, we're working our way towards the end and then this is going to be the end of this episode. So as always I ask you to like, share, subscribe, Comment if you want to, and watch every second of my videos. All that helps me out. If you want to support me, you can click on my name, Rido. On the right will be a blue button that says support this channel. Click it, make a donation. And if you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.